Hi, and welcome back to Vikings Scourge of the North, Part 3. Well, it looks like my attempt to head westward for fame and glory is going to be cut short due to the fact that I don't think I have enough voyage cards to make it to both Wessex and Paris. Um, hopefully one of the voyage cards will allow me to draw additional voyage cards. Um, if everything went right, I could make it to Wessex back to the sea zone. Well, let's see here. Demonstration, I guess. I can make it to this sea zone, then we could drop off at Wessex. Um, then I'd have to go back here to Normandy and then into Paris for the fortress. Um, at best, that's one, two, three, four, five, and I have exactly five cards left. So unless I gain some more voyage cards, I don't think I'm going to be able to pull out a victory. But we'll go ahead and play it out to the end. Um, so you can witness my ignoble defeat. Okay, so we start with the trade segment. Receive one gold of voyaging forces in a trade center space with the settlement. Well, I'm not in a trade center space with the settlement, so we will go straight to recruiting. I could recruit... Well, I can't recruit anybody, it looks like. I only have one gold piece left. So we'll move into the movement segment. So we are going to move into the C zone. And well, I got to determine how many movement points I actually have. Ah, uh, I have one movement point, so I guess we'll stop there. And that's going to pretty much end the turn, other than drawing a voyage card. So we'll draw a voyage card. We have a Viking funeral. Play this card at the end of any combat in which one of your Jarls is killed. Gain one Edda or recruit one Jarl. A discard when used, and this is a keeping uh, card. Viking and funeral. Or Viking funeral. Well, I have a couple of keeping cards, but that's not going to do it for me. Plus, I got a roll for storms at sea. Um, I think it's a six. I get them. Well, let me double check. Roll the die and add the number C spaces. Subtract for a Jarl with a bonus. Um, so we add one, subtract one, and I roll a one. So we're fine. And that pretty much ends the third voyage. Or third or fourth. I've lost track. Um. So we will proceed to the next voyage. Um, well, we'll just keep on with the game plan. We are going to try to move into Wessex on this turn, but we have a trade segment. We get nothing. We have a recruitment. Can't recruit. We have a movement segment. We'll see how far the ship can move. It's pretty much irrelevant. I'm only going one space. But looks like one. So we'll move into Wessex. Rurik decides that he is going to attack a warrior um, kingdom. So, in a warrior kingdom for combat, pick one additional hostile unit. Also see the Varangians. Uh, let's see. Where are the Varangians? You can recruit the Varangian unit if you have a Jarl in a space with a warrior kingdom symbol. You do not need a settlement there. You must make a successful edit check. If you pass, then expend the gold and place the Varangians. Well, my lack of edda, once again, uh, hurts my chances of success. But, um, I'm only in a tray era of warrior kingdom. Let's see, play at the start my alliance the start of a recruitment segment if the forces in a warrior or fortress space gain one die or gold. Well, I'm there, but that um, the sequence of play um, 
doesn't allow me to do that. I am in a warrior kingdom, but I don't know if I have to play at the start of the same. Well, I didn't play it at the start, so it doesn't matter. All right. Let me double check on warrior kingdoms here and see what we have to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's see. What does it talk about warrior kingdoms? Here we go. No, we're not. Let's see. Warrior kingdoms. Where's my warrior kingdoms? Uh, Saga cards. Saga cards. Sat. Saga cards. Let's see. Well, let me double check here and I'll get back with you. Okay, I figured out the rule. I just add one extra hostile unit when we are fighting in a warrior kingdom. However, I must draw a voyage card first and then we'll have combat and all the rest. So, I'm drawing my voyage card. I have an Atli, Atli, whatever that is. One, pick one Viking settlement at random and eliminate it before the battle. Then go to the combat procedure for the adventuring force. Add two to the number of hostile units picked. Well, I'm going to play. <clears throat> I'm going to play the Alliance. The second one, number two. Play after picking a voyage card to cancel this card effect. So I'm going to cancel that and put that in a discard pile. We don't really want to mess with that. So now we'll draw hostile units. We'll roll the die. The die is a five. That's just great. That'll mean three hostile units plus an extra one for the warrior kingdom. Looks like the picks. I would imagine they're picks. Uh are going to put up uh, a heck of a fight here. Three, and let's see, the fourth one. Okay, we might have a chance here, although I may have to redraw the ship. Let me double check on the ship. Um, if we draw a hostile unit ship, what do we do? Number of hostile units. If the hostiles draw a ship in an inland space, draw another hostile unit. However, they're not in an inland space. That would be a dark circle, so. Or a fortress. A uh, dark circle or a fortress, so. They can keep the ship, and we will uh, lay out the battle line and commence battle. Okay, I set up the battle line for the Battle of Wessex. We're going to roll for, um, what do I want to call it, the Tactical Edge, yes. Both sides have uh, a unit with a plus on it, so there will be no bonus to the die roll for either side. Black will be the Hostile Force. And for a change, we actually get the initiative or the tactical edge, so we'll fire first. Um, Rorik and his band will attack the ship, the uh, hostile forces ship. Um, remember, the Vikings can attack any unit, the hostile force has to go in order from top to bottom. So I need a four or less to eliminate the uh, ship. And I roll a four. So the ship will not is destroyed and will not participate in combat. Now the hostile force gets to uh, shoot. And yes, I think you move them up. Yeah, you move them up as they uh, deplete. So, they need a roll of two or less for the first uh, hostile force unit. Rolls a six. So, that is a miss. Um, next, 
we will fire with a Huskarl. 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 I'll never get that name right. He rolls a five and misses. Okay, the second host or the next hostile force has to attack the longship. Because that's the next one in line. And he rolls a two, so he destroys the longship. Let me get my uh, tweezers here. So the longship is destroyed. Right, we'll go back in the pool. And we'll just move everybody up one. Now who's fired? These guys have fired. You fired. You fired. Now it's our turn again. Uh, let's see. The Huskarl unit will attack the top hostile unit with a combat strength of two. And we roll a three. Well, this battle is going better than I expected. The three will eliminate the uh, hostile unit, number two. Now they'll move up. And this guy, this hostile unit, will attack the Huskarls. And if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, please, uh, please correct me in the comments. Rolls a four and misses. And he's fired and I fire. So that leaves the long ship. Long ship's going to fire at the two. And I need a one or a two. Nope. Roll a six. So that's one round to come, but no, I get the uh, other hostile unit. Um, the other hostile unit has to attack the top unit. <clears throat> I think I might have been screwing that, screwing that up. So anyway, he has to attack the Huskarl. He needs a one. I think I've been messing that up. This guy would have to fire at him. This guy would also have to fire at him, I think. I need to double check that real quick. Hostiles are lined up strongest to weakest. The Vikings place their units. Hostile fire. Hostiles fire the one strength of the three. Yeah, they have to continually attack the top unit <clears throat> in this stack. That's why it's important to place your units in your battle line um, carefully. So, anyway, the long ship. No, that was one round of battle except for the one. Now I'm confused. Now I messed myself up by trying to figure that out. Um... I think, I think, I think, I think, what was I doing? No, uh, I think the one was attacking the house, Carl. That was end of round one. Uh, if I made a mistake, well, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal in the long run. Okay, we're ready for round three. So, um, who just, uh, let's see. Yeah, ready for round three. Uh, the Vikings maintain the tactical edge, so the Huskarl will attack the uh, number two unit. And like I said, if I made a mistake, well, it's just uh, it's a beginner's beginner's game. He rolls a two and kills the two hostile unit. He does not get to fire back. Now the lonely one hostile unit will attack the Huskarl. Mm, we'll get a black die since they're the bad guys. Rolls a three, which is a miss. That's girl fired. The uh, naval unit will have uh, Rurik and his band fire at the last um, hostile force unit. And Eric rolls a five, of course, and misses. The hostile unit has to attack the Huskarl unit, needing a one, and gets a three, gets a three, so he misses. I already fired with him, didn't I? Yeah, well I can't uh, fire again with him, so that ends, well, 
The combat is just, it's not complicated, but it's just cumbersome. Um, the ship gets to fire at the uh, one unit, because he's already fired the one unit. We roll a six, and that ends round, uh, what, three? Jeez, I need to keep track of these better. All right. Get these over here on the screen a little better. Okay, then. <clears throat> We still have the tactical advantage. Rurik is going to fire on the uh, hostile unit. And of course, rolls a five. Um, he's just not having uh, much luck in his uh, battles. So now the hostile unit has to attack the Huskarl. And rolls a four, so he misses. Rurik already fired. And he fired. So now we get two shots. Two shots. Where's a black die? The black die will be the long ship. The three will be the Huskarl. Or the three. The uh, white die will be the Huskarl. And the ship hits with a two. Sorry for my hand. And the Huskarl misses. So anyway. The uh, hostile force is eliminated, and we now occupy the warrior kingdom of Wessex. Luckily, I have one ship left, which can carry the Huskarl and um, Rurik. So I'll remove my battle marker. Oops, sorry. It's like juggling. Juggling counters. Okay, they're basically there. And that ends uh, that particular voyage. So now I have three cards left. And I have to somehow, I guess that's in the naval zone, Wessex would be over here. Doofus. All right. So now I have one card to get me here. Um, if I was lucky enough to roll two for naval movement, I could go here and here. Uh, for two voyages and then end up here for basically one voyage. So, trade segment, nothing. Uh, re reinforcement, nothing. Well, wait a minute now. I need to go back and uh, put, down, put down a settlement. That's the last thing you do, number seven in a turn. So we put down a settlement here for a cost of one. And I have one gold left. So unless I... Sorry, we're off screen here. And I have one uh, gold left. So we'll just put him there. We know he's in uh, Wessex. And now I have no gold because of the... Uh, because of uh, the settlement at Wessex. That's going to make things challenging. If I don't get a gold within the next three cards, I'm, uh, I'll lose the game. But let's see. We have a chance. Um, the next thing we do is we go to the next voyage, of which I have three left. We go to recruiting. I don't have any money to recruit. I don't have any cards that let me recruit any other units. Um, movement. Well, we'll go ahead and move. Well, i got to find out how far we can move. I need a three or four. And I get a two. So, we will move out into here. Um, we moved one space. That's going to be a plus one for storms. I have a Jarl with a plus. So, that's going to even it out. If I roll a six, we lose a unit. And I roll... Where do I roll? Oh, the die disappeared behind my uh, thing. My holder here. We roll a four. So we're safe from storms. 
Now we'll draw a Voyage card. Trade expansion. Hey, this might be good. Maybe I'll get some gold. This might work out uh, in my favor. Trade expansion. <clears throat> Keep. Play during a Lindig, Lingdang, which is the recruitment segment, if any Yarl is located in a trade center. Yeah. Um, one, gain one gold for each Viking settlement on the map. Well, that would be nice. I could gain two. Or place one settlement on any other trade center. Well, that's not going to help me. So, I need to get... If any Jarl is located on a trade center. Well, boy, that's just, um, hmm. That's not going to work because I need two Voyage cards to get to Paris. But I get to keep the card, so. But that's not going to make much difference. Paris is a trade center, but I hope to capture Paris before, uh. uh well. I think I can do it if I can get to Normandy and then into Paris and defeat the fortress at Paris. What are fortresses? Fortresses, I have to stop in, there's hostiles. Uh, in the fortress, the hostiles um, win the superiority ties or um, tactical, no? Yeah, battle superiority ties. And hostiles pick one additional unit for battle. So we'll see what Paris uh, has to bring. So the rest of the turn is voyage, combat, no voyage, quest, and settlement. Can't do anything about that. So we go on to the next quest. Ah, Rurik is getting uh, nervous at this time. He can see that this saga is not going according to his plan. And he may not go down in history as a successful Viking raider type person. All right. So the next turn is trade. We're not in a place with the gold. Um, then we have the recruiting play, recruiting phase, but I'm not in a trade center. So we're going to move to Normandy, which is not a naval space. So I do not have to roll for storms. But I do have to roll. Uh, have to roll for movement. And I roll a six, which is three movement points. So we go from here, that's one and two. We can move our forces into Paris using the Seine River, or Seine River to move into Paris. So the sad thing is, I don't have any gold make a settlement this turn, but I do have two Viking cards. So I could get gold during the Linde Liedang, Liedang segment and then build a settlement. Actually, I think I can win if I don't get wiped out. So we're in a fortress. We roll to see how many hostile units there are. Of course, there are three plus one for the fortress. Now, this may or may not work out well. Hmm, I'm just going to put them down upside down, so even I don't know what they are. Alright, and one more. And yes, my ships can go along a river. Um, an inland river. Because they're Viking ships. Oh, this doesn't look good. I draw four. I'll just put it back over here. Ah, uh, this is not looking good. Where are we at? Up here. This is looking bad. Then I draw two. We'll see if there's a three anywhere. Oh, we draw four. We have two fours. One with a plus. And a two. Well, this is probably going to be the ruin of Rurik. Um, yes, the Ruin of Rurik. So, we'll set up our forces. He outnumbers me. And he's got two extremely good units. 
if I get my units settled up here. I don't need the ship anymore, so we'll put it here. Get my hand out of the way. Uh, the Huskarl. And then me. Now, fortresses. Forts. Hostiles pick one additional unit. I don't think there's any uh, any difference with respect to tactical edge. Add one. So if either side has more elite units, well. They have more elite units, so they'll get the tactical edge. The hostile force will. So we're pretty much doomed, I think. But it's been a really close game, and unless I'm really lucky, uh, we're in trouble. Okay, first hostile unit. Hostile unit versus our longship. Needs a four or less. And he rolls a one. <sighs> and the ship is sunk. They're destroyed scuttled in a river. The Huskarl unit will attack I guess it doesn't matter the top uh, the top uh, hostile unit. I need a three or less. And we roll a six of course. Ooh, not looking good. So let's see, he's fired, now he's fired. So now we're back to the hostile units. He has to attack the top unit, basically. Four or less. Oh, roll the three. Uh, not looking good. Looks like the battle before Paris is going to end up in a Viking loss. So close. Okay, Rurik will now get to battle. Those two have fought. He's going to take on the top unit. Needs a four or less. Oh, crap. Um, he does get a four or less. Yes, I used a black die. Sorry. So this unit is destroyed. Um, he's the only one that could have fired. So, Rurik holds on for one more turn. And now we have the ship. Well, no, I can't. If I lost two units, the ship cannot have fired or it must have fired and we destroyed the top unit man I'm gonna have to pay better attention to combat I'm really hosing that up bad well anyway this two will attack Rurik needing a one or a two he rolls a five misses okay now Rurik can fire back Rurik is going to attack the ship in the river let me get a white die here. Four less. Come on. I roll it six. Oh, man. And then we have the last uh, hostile unit, which needs a two or less. Come on. Roll high. And it rolls a one. So close. And yet, so far. And that's the end of the game, folks. Unless, let me see here. No, nope, can't play the uh, that card. And the Viking funeral at the end of any combat in which one of your Jarls is killed. Gain one edit or recruit one Jarl. Well, let's see what we can do here. Let's do a little recruiting. Oops. So I'm going to put the Jarls in a cup. The three remaining ones. And boy, I'm hoping for... I don't know what I'm hoping for. I'm just hoping for a decent Jarl here. Uh, Rurik died. We'll have a Viking funeral for him. And we draw Harold. I don't know if that's Harold Harada, whatever, or just, you know, Harold. Harold's a five. Well, that's a bonus. Harold's special abilities. Vikings have the tactical advantage in all battles. 
but in combat we don't roll again for tactical advantage. Or do we? I mean, no we don't. Yeah, and everything but fortresses, so he'll do me no good there. However, we now get to fire back with Harold, since we just lost um, Rurik uh, before the gates of Paris. So, anyway, let's go ahead and roll a die and see what happens. Need a five or less, at least. Roll a six. Ah, <sighs> this is where I go. Arg. So now, have we started? Yeah, have we started a new round. No, that finishes up that round because all the other guys have attacked. All right, we start a new round of combat. We don't have to worry about tactical advantage or tactical edge. Can't spend any edit points. We do the next round of combat, and they have the initiative. So the ship will fire at Harold. Okay, I need a five or six here, boys, or the game is truly over. Let's see, I'll get rid of that voyage card. Alright. I roll a four, and that is the end of the game. No more Viking funerals, no more units. Harold falls beside Rurik in a disastrous attack on the walls of Paris. So, basically, that's the game. Um, I lost, the Vikings lost, what happens? Let's see, post-battle, hostiles, return all hostiles to the cup. Let's see, if the Vikings lose the battle, lose that number of voyage cards, or gold points for the instructions on the voyage card. Gold cannot go below zero, but if there are insufficient voyage cards, the saga comes to an end. Now what does that mean? Lose that number of voyage cards if the Vikings lose the battle. What does that mean? Or gold points for instructions on the voyage card. Well, the voyage card was... What was a voyage card? Um, the Atli. A-T-L-I. Well, I can eliminate it. I think I should have eliminated one of my settlements too. So, um, it doesn't matter. With all the mistakes I made, this was not a optimal um, play by any means. But this should give you an idea of what Vikings, the Scourge of the North, is like. So, if what you saw sounds interesting to you, then you might want to pick up uh, a copy. It's pretty cheap. I think it's, uh, what, 12 or so dollars on the uh, website, Decision Games website. I got this one from Noble Knight for 12 so... Um, anyway, I think that's about it. Not sure what I'm going to do next, um, but I'm sure I'll think of something. So, this video has run far longer than I anticipated. So it's going to take a while to process. But, anyway, um, until next time, uh, take care. Bye.